Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video and it's about this Rodix 3 Extra 363cc head for a big block Chevy. Now this is an ASCAST head. They have a, um, a CNC ported version of this. Now it does have my label on it, so I had them do that. But um, this one, it um, I'm gonna port it anyway. So what you're seeing here is I'm just gonna give a baseline flow it so I could show you guys what it is. Now, according to Brodix, they claim it flows 436. Now, I'm gonna float on a 4625, and I think they float on a 46. A couple other things. I'm not flowing with the Brodix valves. I have an SI valve here. It's got a little back cut on it as well. And then I actually use an Afreya Tulip exhaust valve, kinda, uh, to, for the exhaust. And the reason why I'm using these is because this one I'm about to use for a different customer project, and this one's just handy for flowing. These aren't the valves I'm even gonna use on it because I'm gonna cut it out to a larger valve size. Speaking of which, let's talk about the valve sizes. This actually comes from the factory with a 2300 intake valve and a 1880 exhaust valve, which is a common kind of size, the exhaust valve is for sure. The intake valve um, is actually kind of smaller. Um, 2300's not, it's not small, but for a larger engine that these would probably go on, you're probably gonna use a 2350 valve but I think they were trying to target these to the guys that run in a 496 because you really can't run a 2350 valve. And with a 496, the bore's just not big enough. So a 2300, this will work. Several of you are gonna ask, well, is this better than the Dragon Slayer version that they have? Um, I'm a huge fan of the small block Chevy Dragon Slayers. I'm not a fan of the big block Chevy Dragon Slayers. These are much better. So, and they cost more and you're gonna be like, wow. I don't want to spend that much money. I'll just get the, you know, the Dragon Slayer, the cheaper version. These are much better. These, for one, have a 24-degree valve angle. The Dragon Slayers have a 26. Um, so this is a more modern chamber. The Dragon Slayer is a more dated chamber, something similar to 781. This, however, is a nice modern chamber. This is what's used in a lot of people's stuff, not just um, Brodix, but AFRs and several others have a chamber that's similar to this. Now, it's not exact, but similar. So... Anyway, it's as cast, but it does have a CNC bulb blend and gasket match on the intake. So you can see the CNC bulb blend here. Now, they didn't knock out this ridge here. And if you've watched my video about, um, you know, doing the 60 grit finish, if it improves flow, it's not so much the surface finish, but it's getting rid of just that lumps there. It, you'd be surprised. Am I going to do it on this one? No, I just don't have time. I'm sorry. I know you guys would like to see me just do, you know, a cross cut burr and 60 grit and see how much this head gains. I just don't have time. I'm gonna fully port it anyway. So, I'm not doing that. But it does have a CNC bowl blend. It has one on the exhaust too. You also have CNG chambers, which is really nice. Uh, the chambers come in at 119 cc's. Sorry, I had to turn off the AC. The chambers come in at 119 cc's. This is a rectangular port. I'm gonna check out my camera. I'll move it in a second, but just showing you. It's a rectangular port, but I want to keep it on this angle because I want to show you something real quick. So I rarely ever talk about this in a video because it's like one of the secrets I try to keep, but um, people that are already doing it know this. This head is a good example of it because you can see it from the factory. Um, it's the way that the throat's offset. And what I mean by that is the throat is, for those that don't know, it's usually right behind where the valve seat is. So here's a valve seat and where a valve job ends, this is typically the throat that goes all the way around. Typically we have this in sizes that range between 88%, which is take the valve times 0.88, 88% on the small side, all the way up to 92% on a really high end race head with steeper valve angles. I don't recommend you guys just porting something out to 92%. Um, that's actually in a video where I said what not to do. But anyway, a lot of you think it's perfectly circle. It's not. Whenever I do the, which I don't show in the videos, and I will never, um, but I will talk about it here, just, just this video. I do offset them. So in other words, I will take more of, if it was this head, I would take less off on this side and more off on this side. So the throat's actually kind of kicked this way. Um, well, the opposite of what they've done. And I'll show you in just a second. So in other words, it's tilted. So I have a lot of angles here and very little angles here. Brodix from the factory does it the exact reverse opposite way. Let me show you. See the CNC bowl blend? This is your top, your seat angle. Undercut, undercut, and then a lot of it's gone from the CNC bowl blend. 
If I was doing it, you would see all of your angles here, like you do on this side. They have all of them here, and then right here you see the CNC bulb blend. It's like they have it in reverse. Um, so what you're doing is you're causing the air to turn right into the wall, and I don't want that to happen. I actually want it to go straight, so I put what looks like over here, here, because you're gonna come and it comes straight up through the wall, not turning into it. And then I have the angles here because I want it to turn out and around here, not straight. I want it to curve, so I need the angles here. They did it reverse, which is weird. I and mean, everybody's got their own different ways, but that's not exactly how I do it. Now, that does bring up another point. Usually, when I'm importing these heads, I don't get them with the CNC bowl blend. I get them like this. So, for instance, this is a 345. And if you notice, I had them don't do CNC bowl blend because now I can put my throat how I want it to be. That's why I have them do this. It would flow like crap if I just, if you ever ordered it this way, like garbage. So having the CNC bowl blend really does help on that. Now, oddly enough, although I don't like the way that they did the intake offset, the exhaust one is actually like it's supposed to be. So on the exhaust side, we have the angles here, which is what you're supposed to, and straight here. So there's, in other words, you can tell there's your seat, a little bit of a top cut, undercut, sorry, and then boom, right into it, straight down. That's right, because that's how I have it whenever I do it by hand. And then I have all my angles on this side, which is what they've done. So the exhaust is good, the intake, you have it going the wrong way. And anyway, of course, that's just my opinion. Everybody's got their own, and they say I'm totally wrong. But I don't know, it seems to work for me. But um, let me show you some stuff too. A lot of you think it's just the intake ports that's different between like the 345, which is this head, and the and this head, the 363. And they think the exhaust ports are the same. I mean to tell you they're not. Look at this. This is the exhaust port. Now compare that to the 345. That exhaust port versus that exhaust port. The 363s have a much larger exhaust port. Um, matter of fact, um, Sometimes I'll special order stuff from Brodix. And what I did on the one that's on the, in the Camaro, I have a 335, which is an oval port head, but I had them put this exhaust port in it. Special order deal. And that was pre-COVID. I don't even know if they'll do it anymore, but because um, it was taking far less grinding. Because obviously you could open this up and do it, but it sure takes less grinding to have it like this. But uh, anyway, that's the head. It does have a raised up exhaust port. So it does require a special stud, um, a longer stud on the side. But the exhaust port's definitely raised up. That helps it with flow. Um, on the catalog I had, it has this one flowing less than the 345 on the exhaust. I think they had them reversed because this one should definitely outflow that. Um, anyway, it has a nice... I love what they do. They're really good about their stuff. I like that they have helicoils. I know some people are like, I don't agree with that. Helicoils are better to me than just having it go into straight aluminum. But the best ones are from actually from RHS. RHS used to put in, or they probably still do, these inserts and in, these time inserts, so it grabs from a much larger area. Love those. No one else ever did that. But I still like that they use helicoils. That's just a me thing. Can they come out? Absolutely. Have I seen it happen? Yep. They still do. Things can go wrong, and I promise you, no matter how good it is, you'll pull out stuff. I've seen time inserts come out too, so a lot of weird stuff. Anyway. There's kind of a rundown of the head. Let me show you the other side. I know I should probably stop and edit, but I'm just not that good. So there's your rectangular port, and you can tell that CNC gasket matched. It's good stuff right here. Um, this will work with almost any intake manifold you have. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on the flow bench, and I'm gonna flow it with these valves and see how they do. Now, I should also point out. By the way, you can kind of see a better angle here on the um, offset on the throat too. See, straight angles also on the, this side you always want to have your angles by the way not only do i offset it this way i also leave all my angles here on this one on the short side so some people leave them flat i will take off some but not much but definitely this way so it's like that probably way over your head and i won't ever talk about it again because i like to keep some trade secrets and that was one of them so it won't ever show me how, it won't ever have a video of me showing you how to do that, I promise you. Anyway, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, 
I am gonna, I already cut a, did one of the heads with the valve job. I cut it out to a 2350. So it still can be if you ever want to do that. It's a good job if you're on a bigger bore. You should probably cut these out to a 2350 and do blending. I guarantee it's probably gonna move more air. But I am gonna flow it. So we're getting ready to flow it. But I want to tell you, I'm gonna flow two runners because on a big block Chevy, you have a long runner and you've got a short runner. So you're gonna get both flow numbers from both those and then this exhaust port because all the exhaust ports are the same. The intake runners are not. Anyway, let me get to flowing it and then I can share the results with you. Here are the flow numbers. Now, before I go through too much in depth with these, I want you to, uh, to, uh, to understand that this is the exception and not the rule. The reason why I'm saying this, you're gonna look at these numbers and they're gonna look pretty low. Um, I will say this, I have flowed 345 heads that have flowed more than this 363 head of Brodix. And I think there's a couple issues and I'll talk about those in just a second. But I don't want you to think that if you got the head that this is probably what you're gonna get. This is probably the lowest one that I've ever flowed and it's not entirely Brodix's fault. For one, I used a um, SI valve, which that's not bad. This actually is a pretty good valve but it's definitely not the one that Brodix uses. So Brodix is probably gonna flow a little bit higher. I'm saying all this because I really want you to understand, um, I have flowed a 345 stock. So this is the first 363 I've actually flowed. The 345 stock I have flowed and it went to about four, 410. If you notice, this is the long runner. So this one's the one that everybody advertises, the much better flowing one. And this is the short runner. If I look at the long runner, it only went 397 and eight, which you're like, oh my gosh, they lied so much because it's supposed to have gone 436. Um, and you're like, this is, they lied so much. Well, the biggest thing is one, I'm using a different valve, but there's one other issue and I'll show you in just a second. The, this is the short runner. Now it's actually not that bad. Um, you're like 390, that's it. No one ever advertises their short numbers, their short runner numbers, because they're not that good. The exhaust is actually pretty good, partly because I had the tulip exhaust valve, which kind of makes the numbers look higher, but this doesn't look that bad. We'll go through them. The 400 number is actually pretty good at 286 and a 289. It's not bad there. 600 number, it's not good. 370 and 351. That's not that bad for a short runner. That's not good at all. Should be about 400. And I would have thought about, you know, 400 here for sure, not there. So it's a little off. And so it kind of disappointed me. Let me show you why. Okay, let's go over to the head. I'm going to show you what's going on right now. So I... You, I've got it set up on my seat and guide machine because I just got done cutting the valve job. So um, just to give you an idea. So I cut this out to a 2350 valve and you're like, oh my gosh, you made it so much worse. It's also a 50 degree valve seat on the intake and exhaust. So you can see what the exhaust, the valve job looks like after I cut it. If I left it this way, it's probably gonna flow a little bit worse. Because I cut it out to a larger valve, you can tell now I've kind of, I'm fixing part of the problems that will be there because this whole ridge will be gone because I'll shape the throat like I want. But, Here's the reason really proud, I'm about 90% sure the reason why the numbers aren't very good is because there's a heck of a ledge. So this is where the CNC bulb blending ends. And you can see there's just a nasty ledge right there. And it's on almost all the ports, not so much on that one, but I flowed these two and you could definitely just, you could see it. Now this is the long runner. This is the one supposed to flow the best and it's got the worst problems there. So. Um, and you could tell that the port kind of got squared. So it had a little bit of core shift too, which is common with as cast heads, but I'm certain, and I just don't have time to do it or I would, um, I'd show you guys, but I'm certain if I took this out, I'm probably not going to get 436, but I'm probably going to get like four teens. Um, so which is pretty good. The exhaust, there's no, there's a very little ledge. That's why it didn't do that bad. But I really think that's the reason why the numbers are low. So if you happen to buy this head and you're like, I'm not buying this head. This is for the price they want for that. And it only flows barely 400 and it's 360 cc's. That no way. Because remember, this is an ASCAS version of the CNC ported one. And you're like, man, it doesn't do nothing. Well, it's just a little bit of work here. And I'll be happy to do that. So because this is a big block Chevy head, if you wanted me to make these 60 grit, the, the surface finish is different for fuel um, fuel distribution, but it will definitely help improve flow and I guarantee you're gonna make more power. Um, I could do that and it's gonna cost 500 bucks on top of what this head is here. The size and stuff wouldn't change, but you definitely would pick up some airflow and some power too. Um, I'll make it bird here, right here at the throat, just so it gets the atomization as well. But I only mention that because I really think that's all it needs. If you're good with a grinder, you could do that yourself. Easy pick up because there's also, there's kind of a ledge there 
not bad, but definitely here. They're just, that's what's doing it. That's what I'm trying to say. So, and it could just be, I've got to just happen to get one that's just not very good. Because like I said, I've seen plenty of 345s. I've ported many of those and those are usually right around 400 to 405. So this one should have been better and it just wasn't. I, I'm thinking that's what it was. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.